I'm Shannon Jackson and I'm the director of the Arts Research Center at UC Berkeley and it was our privilege to welcome Rick Lowe in a 10-day residency here at UC Berkeley. It was a residency that reached out to students in our art practice department, students in our College of Environmental Design, students in our African American Studies department, but it was also one that reached out to and partnered with organizations in our wider Bay Area arts ecology, uh, including, of course, Berkeley Art Museum, our own campus art museum, as well as entities like the David Brower Center, advancing their commitment to arts and social justice. Entities like Eastside Arts Alliance in Oakland, which has an historic uh, record in working on art and social justice issues in their, in their community or new emerging projects like the Greenway Project in the city of Richmond. He, it also gave uh, Rick a chance to uh, visit some of his old stomping grounds at the Headland Center in Marin. So that kind of ethos where we can reach out to a range of organizations, where we can help each other advance shared goals here in a wider Bay Area arts ecology is exactly the role we hope we can play here at our public university where we are deeply invested in the role of the arts in sustaining a thriving public realm. You always have to remember that the best art, I mean, it's not about being efficient. The most efficient way to do a, a portrait of somebody is to take a photograph and project it up on the image and you draw it in and then you paint it out, right? That's efficient. But the more meaningful way is, you know, you start painting it. And when you realize the eye's too low, you know, and you paint it out and you lift it up and then all of a sudden, you know, some of the things that you, the underpainting of the, painting out the low eye to put, add to the, you know, and all of a sudden it begins to, it adds layer of character and depth to it. What I find most interesting though is that when artists move, we haven't figured out how to retain uh, you know, what it is that we do as an artist. For me, going back to your question, Nick, for me the thing was just, I was very comfortable. Well, not, it took me, a, there was a brief moment that I had to figure it out that because I was no longer painting, that I, that I didn't have to resign as an artist. You know, I could actually, um, because certainly the same processes and same ways of thinking were evident. And, uh, you know, it was just different forms. Kind of understanding that and realizing that I can kind of take that and continue with it into whatever the practice is that I wanted to do. You know, social practice, community, socially engaged work is a new, it's, it's a new form for the art world, right? But it's all, I mean, it's happened in communities for a long time. And one of the biggest challenges with um, doing socially engaged work is to, how do you get somebody to take your idea, you know, and kind of move with it? That's a real big challenge, you know, to get somebody to take your idea. So, you know, you're, if you, if you're, coming up with ideas and you have to really work uh, passionately around connecting people to the idea so that they can kind of move it move it forward. Build it around so that you know the, the, the responsibility doesn't just rest within you.
Because everybody has something they like, you know, and you start there, you know, from what people like, what they're interested in. Figure out where people are and you just try to, that's just a big part of it, trying to figure out personalities and help those personalities come to the surface. It's like what you were saying, you know, you said you had Pete, you know, I mean, he followed you enough to realize it. Let me give this guy a chainsaw. Oh <laughs> you know? You know, I mean, that's a that's an incredible amount of trust of him and observation to really get to a point where he felt like, you know, I can tell this guy to work with a chainsaw. A, a friend of mine talking about how important it is to have a place where people feel like they belong, you know, and a, a, have a sense of belonging. And I think that's what it's going to become for me. It's not all great, right? The part of belonging there for me is being able to be a part of to celebrate the joys and the accomplishments, but also to be there when there are tough times, you know, for people and that kind of stuff. So, and you know, so it's all, it's, to me, it's just about having a place that I belong and I can contribute and be a part of every day. And, you know, I, I have an ego like everybody else, but my ego doesn't work like that, you know? I mean, to me, it's like, that's one of the driving forces of artists, right? To, to make work because it'll, they'll live continuously through their work. I'm not, I'm not so interested in that. I, I'm interested in the work being uh, effective and if there's a, you know, if, 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 if it continues to be a vehicle for interesting, you know, impacts that happen in the neighborhood, then yeah, but, you know, and hopefully, hopefully I've laid some foundations that people can build upon to continue to use it. But if not, it's okay. Some of the things that, that I try to tell people who are entering into the field, and it, it's to really focus on thinking about who you are. Understand your character. Understand your sensibility. Know as much about yourself, because then that'll start to impact how you function as an artist, and how you develop your career, whatever, whatever. You know, I mean, it's just someone who just has a, their tendency is, I mean, they, they want to be collaborative because they know that's a valuable thing in the work, but it's not in their nature. Just know that. I mean, you have to own that. And it's not that you, you know, that it becomes, it's not a deal breaker. It it's not something that breaks your capacity. It, it just let you know that you have to build your work in ways to compensate for that. I mean, you do that when you want to work in a community, right? Everybody knows before you go into the community, you need to try to like understand the community from every angle and every side. You want to know what, you know, what's the hot buttons and what's this and what's that. And that kind of stuff. So you know that about doing the community. But there's a community in your own self, in your own being, that you have to do the same thing and you have to actually do it first.